Hi, everyone. Uh, it's okay? Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming to uh, today's session. Um, um, I feel extremely honored to be here to speak in front of in front of everyone here. Um, uh, I was watching uh, the pre uh, some of the previous uh, publishing point uh, sessions uh, last night, so that I am more prepared myself. Uh, I know what to expect and. Uh, one thing I noticed that Susan always reminded the um, uh, the speakers, you know, your topic has to relate to book for some reason. Uh, uh, you, you have to relate your, your topic to, to books, kind of tie it back to books. She always said that. And I'm, I'm wondering why I didn't get that re reminder from you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, a um, little bit of my uh, background. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I have uh, started two um, startups before. They are both mobile and technology related. And Wattpad is my third startup. And uh, um, uh, we just raised a round of funding from uh, Union Square uh, Ventures in the summer. And uh, like Susan said, I'm going to have the board meeting very conveniently after this uh, session. So um, uh, I'm very happy to be, to be here to speak in front of you today. Um, just want to share uh, what Wattpad is and, and our mission. We want to create the world's best place for every reader and writer to share and discover their stories. Um, when I say every reader and writer, I don't mean uh, one million, I don't mean seven million. We are thinking in the long term, when everyone has an internet connected device, and, and now we're getting there, there are four or five billion mobile phones out there and many, many other different internet-connected devices. We think uh, every single one can be a Wattpad user. So um, our uh, addressable market, our addressable space is very large. Everyone, as long as you can read or write on an electronic device, we want them to be a Wattpad user. That, that's our, our vision. And uh, I also want to share some numbers with, with you. Um, uh, in the last quarter, our users have been spending over 2 billion minutes on Wattpad. Uh, to put things into perspective, what, what does 2 billion minutes mean? Um, uh, I was uh, reading some, uh, some numbers from uh, Nielsen about Netflix and online video consumption. Um, a few quarters ago, uh, Netflix users were spending about uh, 20 billion minutes per quarter. So, Size-wise, we are roughly one tenth, ten percent of Netflix, and uh, our usage is doubling every six months. Uh, we have seven million monthly unique users across uh, web and mobile right now, and most of our usage is coming from mobile. Uh, Thirty minutes per uh, per visit, uh, quarter of a million monthly up uploads. Um, just to put things into perspective, it took us three years, uh, a little bit over three years to accumulate the first quarter of a million uploads. So we are really seeing some of trend here. And, uh, and uh, also very social. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, um, uh, millions of users, they are very socially active on Wattpad. They are engaging in a lot of different conversations uh, among the, the readers and, and, and writers. And uh, on average, they are generating about uh, three million comments and, and votes. Again, to uh, just to make a comparison, um, uh, Huffington Post, uh, one of the largest uh, online uh, newspaper, for lack of a better term, uh, uh, they, uh, in, in terms of uh, user comments, they have roughly uh, three times our, our volume, and they are the number one leader in, in the space right now. And uh, our e-reading application, the mobile application, is uh, also um, consistently one of the top uh, e-reading applications uh, across all the different app stores. And um, uh, I also want to show you a quick uh, video trailer um, of, of Wattpad. So that you, uh, in case you, you are not familiar with Wattpad, this video trailer will give you a, a good idea of what it's all about in a, in, in a minute.
just wanted to say thanks for all the support. You guys are amazing. I could never dream this. This is so awesome. again for making the time to talk this afternoon. Um, there's going to be plenty of time and opportunity for the audience to ask some questions as well. So, but I'm going to get the ball rolling if I may. Um, I think the first thing is obviously, let's talk a little bit about the past. Um, what's, what's the genesis of the idea? Where did it come from? How did you get started? What I was started five years ago, and I, I would love to say we um, all, all planned it five, exactly five years from we start, we would have seven million users, but of course it's not that way. There, there were uh, a lot of uh, ups and downs and twists and turns to, to get here. Um, but um, I, I think when we first started, the, the, the vision of the company was quite well defined. We, we haven't quite changed. That vision hasn't quite changed in the last five years. From the very beginning, we want to uh, build a, a, a service. Um, we, we didn't use the word uh, social network or community back then, five years ago. Uh, but we, we, we wanted to build a service that is um, allowing everyone to upload or create or write their, their stories and create space for them to, to consume on mobile. Um, from the very beginning, we, 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 we believe in, in the world that is moving rapidly into mobile um, uh, for entertainment and, and book should be considered as a, a big entertainment type. Uh, and uh, uh, people would spend a lot of time, increasingly more time on mobile to consume those content. So those are the two things that we defined very early on. Um, to build a community, it, really takes a long time to, to uh, nurture the behavior. So um, in the very, very beginning, the, the start wasn't uh, 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 very rapid. It, it's a slow build. In the first couple of years, we were building the technology, building the community, and then um, there were a few inflection points in, in our journey. Um, about uh, two and a half years ago, we start to see uh, one teenage writer the writing was so good that uh, attracted perhaps 50 readers to uh, become a fan and uh, follow her stories. And those 50 writers, uh, one of those uh, um, also started to interest in, in putting up her, her writing. And that it helped us to kind of snowball the, the effect. And one writer turned into 10, 10 turned into 100. And that's, that's why you, you, you see the hockey stick that I was uh, showing you guys. And, uh, um, and, and, and after that, uh, we are seeing uh, increasingly more um, uh, older writers, uh, male writers, uh, different type of writers, uh, poets, and other people start joining. So the, um, the community, the behavior, and the uh, usage, the user, the, the demographics has been constantly shifting. And uh, we, we have to take a very close look to the community. We, have, we understand, try to understand behavior changes, understand and catch those moments, and uh, try to morph the morph work path to, to, to help different type of users. Alan, do you want to move over your, your letters are showing on your, your face? Here, you need to switch over this. Switch over next to my thing. There. So, when we <laughs> follow each other around the room. <laughs> <laughs> So when you look at today's service, Alan, is it, is it pretty much faithful to the original conception, or have there been any surprises? Yeah, there, there are quite a few su su surprises. Um, we, uh, like I said, in the very beginning, we, 
we wanted to build something that allows um, uh, all the users to participate. We, we don't want to be the one creating the content, for example. You know, that, that has been uh, staying proof all along. But one thing that always caught me by surprise was how social, how interactive the users are. Um, um, of course, we, we kind of anticipate some of that, but the number of messages, number of comments, and uh, the, the way they interact, the, and the excitement of uh, waiting for people to upload the next chapter, for example, always uh, inspire me. Um, we uh, we kind of expected that, but not to the degree that uh, they are so uh, social, interactive, and, and Sorry, can you guys move to the center so that people can, can see that? Sorry, I'm trying to turn this off, but why don't you come in the center? You want center. to sit in the middle? Sorry? You want to sit in the middle? Yeah, in the middle would be great. Okay. Thanks. Um, and I'll try to get this off. So, some proportion of this audience, Alan, works in what we call traditional book publishing. So, it's interesting to explore with you where Wattpad sees itself in that ecosystem, if at all. Are you friend or foe, cooperator, collaborator, competitor, um, threat, opportunity? Where do you stand in the, the traditional ecosystem, do you think? Uh, well, today we do see uh, quite, um, not a lot, but quite a few uh, publishers uh, utilizing Wattpad to, uh, as a marketing tool. Uh, for, for them to uh, uh, generate fan base. Uh, for example, um, uh, we were working with uh, uh, a company called Fourth Story Media, and they uh, published their, uh, it's a YA novel, uh, they published the, that YA novel from the Amanda Project through uh, HarperCollins. Um, we have been working with them in the past uh, 12 months now. Uh, uh, the Amanda Project, as I mentioned, is, is a YA novel, and uh, it's, it's actually a series. So uh, what um, Papa Collins was doing was uh, uh, the book one of the, uh, of the series, which was published almost two years ago, uh, was given away for free on, on Wattpad in, antici in anticipation of book two and book three coming out. So. Um, this project is uh, very interesting because, um, uh, in, in a number of ways. Uh, n n number one, um, traditionally, book, book publisher uh, uh, was not very willing to give away content, and uh, um, I, I truly appreciate the foresight of uh, HarperCollins and others people involved that to experiment with uh, Wattpad and, and see what it was, and uh, the 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 results was. Um, uh, Huge, uh, big, uh, upside surprise to everyone. Uh, uh, we were able to generate a lot of fans for uh, and bring a lot of awareness to to the Amanda project number one, and generate a lot of uh, very passionate fans for them. And uh, uh, one thing also very interesting is when I when we look at the comments, when we look at um, the what the users were, were saying, one thing that uh, constantly came out was. Wow, this book is so good. I have never heard about Amanda Project before, but I'm going to the bookstore to buy the book now. That's kind of interesting because, wait a minute, you can get the entire content for free. Why would you want to go out to the bookstore and buy the book? And, uh, What's the answer to that? I wouldn't um, do it. Uh, it's, <laughs> the, it's not just the content. It's, it's also, um, uh, that is a... Sake, you know, uh, I want to keep the book in my library. Right. Uh, that part of emotion always tied to uh, book lovers. You know, it's not only just the content that you absorb into your, your mind, into your brain, but also being able to see, for example, in this case, the, the physical object sitting, yeah. sitting in, in the bookshelf. People would, would be willing to buy that. I'm not saying everyone who has read the book of what had would rush out to Barnes and Noble to buy the book, but um, there's a, definitely a percentage of those people uh, going out to uh, buy the book. And secondly, um, with so much content out there, when I say content, I don't, 
I'm not saying just books, but um, video, music, and, and all the other content out there. There's so much noise. It's very hard for a new writer or a new book or a new brand uh, to um, uh, stand out of the crowd. So uh, you, you utilizing social network to uh, um, as a marketing tool, is, is actually very effective. I, I take your point, but if there's noise in the crowd, you're partly responsible for the noise in the crowd. You, <laughs> you've created the crowd, thank goodness, um, in some respects. So what I'm getting at here, I suppose, is I, when I look at the site, there's an explicit invitation to agents and publishers to collaborate, and, and that's great to see. So. Is your experience of dealing with Harper Collins um, typical of the pitch that you're making to them? In other words, give us your free content, build buzz and community around the story, in the hope that a fraction of the readers will run out and buy the keepsake. Is basically that the pitch? Yeah, that, that, that's right. That's, um, uh, and uh, I think we have seen this type of model. Uh, in other industry, for example, freemium is almost the uh, de facto um, business model in, in gaming, and it works beautifully for many gaming companies, for example. And uh, uh, music, uh, we are seeing similar uh, behavior as well. Uh, some of the indie bands, for example, they, they give away the, uh, uh, some songs for free uh, uh, as a promotional tool. So this is um, nothing really new. And uh, in, a, in a way, if you, if every, everybody else is doing the same, you almost have to join join the club. And you talked about the HarperCollins example and their satisfaction with that. How many others have joined the club? Have some of HarperCollins' competitors, for example, also joined the club? Yeah. Uh, we, um, we also work with uh, uh, Chusco. They choose your own adventure company uh, on a similar project, and the results was uh, similarly successful. Uh, um, I don't have the results figures; you know, they, they, they didn't disclose that to me. But um, they were uh, also very pleased. Um, I have to say, this is the um, uh, um, probably not all the publishers would, would embrace this idea yet. Uh, uh, only only a very small minority on, on what that is. Coming from publishers, most of the users or content on, on Wattpad are coming from the um, the other end of the scale, the aspirate, um, aspiring writers or uh, self-publishing writers. Shifting track a little bit, can, can you tell us a little bit about the revenue model going forward? Um, I noticed a number of sponsorship-related opportunities on the site and some advertising. I assume that's the principal revenue source right now. And is that expected to be the model going forward as well? Um, not, not really. Uh, the, that's the funny thing about digital um, properties is uh, there's only one winner, typically. Uh, because in, in the physical world, you, you can be constrained uh, geographically or some other factors. So, for example, uh, you can set up, uh, set up a, a, book, a bookstore in, in the UK and never have to compete with uh, Barnes & Noble, for example. But um, on digital, uh, very typically, there's only one big winner. Like in, in the case of book selling, Amazon by far is the number one player in there. And uh, the uh, establish, establishing the early lead in the market is very, very important. So in, in our space, um, it, uh, we are creating a new market for ourselves. Um, uh, we, we are kind of unique in this space. We are not competing with Amazon, for example. And uh, for us, the number one goal uh, at this stage of our company is user, user growth, because it's a network effect based business. And once you have enough users, uh, you, you stay there for uh, stay at the top. For, a long time, so um, uh, for, for us, uh, uh, generating revenue or generating revenue in a significant way for a business model is not our number one priority at, at the moment. 
Uh, and I also truly believe that uh, when you have a billion users, there are many ways to make money. Uh, look at Facebook, look at um, Twitter. They, they, they are start, starting to monetize now, but they didn't do it until they reached the 100 million users um, uh, uh, or 200 million users point before they start monetizing. So we, we are not at that stage yet. And let's hope you get to the point where you have 100, 200 million users. Um, there are guys sitting in an office not far from here who will suddenly at that point start nudging you and saying, hey, I'd like to see some money back from the investment you gave, we gave you over the summer. So you must have some ideas how when you get to scale, that revenue might start to flow back. Is that something you can share with us now or not? Or not? Well, maybe not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, to be completely honest, uh, maybe not at the moment, but um, I can share some of the thoughts behind uh, what we are thinking. Um, uh, when we first started, we, uh, as I mentioned before, we, we believed in enabling the community, enabling the users to uh, generate the content and uh, uh, on digital, uh, the amount of content available compared to the uh, good old physical bookstore, for example, is, is an order of magnitude larger. So we'll be seeing um, uh, a very huge shift in supply and demand from a content perspective, uh, a huge shift in supply and demand. Um, and uh, uh, when we see this type of shift, the price of the content would be um, very close to the net incremental net margin of um, an incremental, incremental copy that you're selling, for example. And for digital, uh, that margin is pretty close to zero. So uh, we have to operate, uh, as a business, we have to operate in this new world where the um, price point will be extremely low. and. Uh, um, for us to monetize, or for any other di digital content company to monetize, they have to figure out a way uh, that um, uh, you can generate billions of views by like YouTube and start to make money uh, by volume. Thank you for that. And let's talk a little bit about the content on the site right now. And when you look at the site and when you watch the promotional video you showed us, the word that jumps out at you all the time is stories. And my relatively brief tour of the site revealed a lot of fiction and some poetry and so on. Um, do you see the service growing to encompass something beyond what we would traditionally call stories? Could you see it encompassing educational content, vocational content, and so on in the future? Or is it going to stay as a traditional story exchange in that sense? Uh, very, very good question. Um, in the longer term, when I say long term, 55 or 10 years from now, we, we want to include educational content, reference book, and all the other uh, long form content. That, that's our vision. Uh, but in, in the near term, uh, we believe uh, to build a um, uh, very friendly, supportive community, uh, using stories as as an entry point, as a as a beachhead would be uh, would be uh, the wise thing to do. Uh, so that's why you are seeing a lot of uh, almost exclusively right now is uh, fiction, poetry, and uh, uh, generalized uh, as stories. But in, in the longer term, we probably would be expanding into other spaces. Is there any monitoring today of what is put on? Is, is there anything that prevents offensive or illegal material being posted? Yeah, absolutely. But we, we, um, we cannot be uh, too heavy-handed. Because uh, 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 for, for, for the internet, um, uh, a lot of people are um, mistaken the, the fact that on the internet, oh, we are going to get rid of all the middle men. I, I, I don't think so. If you look at YouTube, they are still a middle man. But the role of the middle man is quite different in the traditional world. Um, uh, in the old uh, uh, 
economy, for example, the uh, middleman is basically the gatekeeper. They would control what gonna flow um, from the content creation side to the to the end user side. But for uh, digital or for the internet uh, companies, that role is changing. We are no longer the gatekeeper. We we are the facilitator. We we want to remove, reduce, and remove the friction between content creation and content consumption. That being said, um, we we cannot, uh, and we don't want to allow uh, offensive material, um, hate speech, for example, on pornography and and many other uh, contests that we, we don't want to see that may contaminate my my community. And of course, illegal content as well. Um, so um, to, to answer your question for uh, um, uh, copyright infringing material, we, we do work with uh, basic, uh, probably all the top six uh, publishers right now. We got, we, we, uh, we received the metadata, the Onyx files from publishers, and we built the filter to prevent people from uploading Twilight, for example. And we also have uh, offensive uh, messages or offensive language filter. Uh, to prevent people from uh, uh, you know, uploading uh, stories that has excessive offensive messages or, or excessive pornographic uh, uh, stories, for example. That, that's, a, that's a tough role to confer upon yourself, isn't it? Because in some cases the line is very easy to draw. It's, it's illegal to publish material that incites racial hatred or religious hatred, and thank God for that. But a, a great deal of mainstream pornography is not illegal, quite the opposite. And there are many, I imagine, internet sites flourishing that provide erotic stories and so on. So is there a sort of editorial curation line in what pad that you draw and people must not go beyond? How, where, where do you define it? In our, in our terms of service, we ex explicitly say we don't want to have any pornographic uh, content. And we built the filter to, uh, to try to catch that. The, the challenge for us is, um, given the volume, and, and if you remember, we, we we are tracking a quarter of a million, 300,000 uploads per month. If I ask my entire company to stop working and just read the story, <laughs> it's just not possible to catch up. So that's that's a challenge for us. And uh, um, uh, we, we have to automate this uh, as much as possible. We have to build uh, technology. But at the end of the day, there will be some gray area. Uh, and, uh, uh, and our users will, will, will tell us. Hey, uh, what? That, how can you ban my story? How come this? Uh, I, I think it's perfectly okay. And uh, in those cases, we, we have to manually uh, uh, read the story, uh, at least scan through the story to, to, to make sure it's not excessive. Because um, to, to to us, building a supportive, uh, friendly community is extremely important, and the uh, quality of the content is, is part of that. And uh, so we we are putting a lot of effort. To uh, um, both automate this and uh, uh, manually curate when, when uh, questions come up. When, when you talk to people in the so called traditional book publishing industry, particularly on the editorial side, they don't so much use that word gatekeeper, if they ever did. They certainly don't use it much now. You do occasionally, you can occasionally, if you catch them on an unguarded, drunk and <laughs> they, they'll talk about themselves as curators, taste makers if they're feeling fanciful. Um, is, there, is there any sense of curation going on in Wattpad's view of itself? Uh, we, we kind of outsource that work to our users. <laughs> uh, well, with our volume, that almost, that, that's almost the only choice we have. And uh, we, we, we are um, building personalized uh, recommend, recommendations, for example, uh, to help the user define the content that caters to, to their taste. Uh, we, we are not quite there yet, uh, but that, that's one thing that we are actively building. Um, but e even without that, uh, 
through this social graph, um, I'm not sure you, uh, you have a chance to go to market before you come to the session, uh, but um, uh, um, the, the, the way it works is very similar to other social networks, uh, similar to Twitter, for example. You can follow a certain writer, and you can, if you're a writer, uh, uh, you can be followed by somebody else, and the entire social graph is, is public. So you, through that um, social connection, um, you can find uh, writers or, or content that may be uh, suitable to, to your taste. And that helps us, uh, help the users to discover content that is uh, um, um, personalized to, to the taste. I'm glad you mentioned that because that, that was very much my experience of, of using the site. I felt like someone taken the roof off a huge book warehouse and dropped me into it. And without much in the way of navigation to help me find things that I would find particularly interesting and met my needs, is that? It, it, it sounds as if that's something you're actively working on to fix. Yeah, we 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 are beyond the point that um, um, uh, it's funny for me to say this. We we always have too much content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for a new user uh, to discover the, 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 the content that's suitable for, for them uh, right now. We, um, we, would, uh, do, uh, we, we would have some recommendation uh, based on uh, the most recent um, uh, activities from our user. Uh, we have uh, what we call the What's Hot List uh, based on the, uh, some recent activities. But, um, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult because everyone, everybody's taste is different, and uh, uh, the, the, if the story is uh, I consider as good, or many of our users as consider as good, may not be suitable to, to your taste, and uh, that's uh, one of the challenges that is uh, facing us right now. When you think about the future and differentiating yourself. The more successful you are, the more likely you are to attract competitors, I imagine. Um, what is it, do you think, that will ultimately distinguish you and differentiate you? Um, what is it that you do better than anybody else could do? Other than being first, which is obviously very important. But what is it that you do that really couldn't be done better, do you think, than someone else? Well, the, uh, the concept of what type of cell, uh, it, it comes down to sharing text on the internet. It's, it's fairly basic. Uh, and I was joking to a friend of mine the other day. Uh, he was amazed by some of our numbers, but I was telling him, had I limit the, the size of the text to 140 characters, I would be even more successful. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not really the uh, idea itself. And I'm sure there are uh, other companies trying to copy this. And uh, also, you know, let's face it, uh, writing community, uh, uh, online fiction has been around since the uh, since day one of the internet. So I, I don't, I don't believe from that perspective, um, uh, uh, we uh, we we have an idea so unique that no one can copy. But one thing that. We, uh, we we are very proud of is we we spend a lot of time in the community and community is a big part of what we are doing and we help them nurture them and uh, we can pick up a lot of signals uh, from our users like what they want uh, what the trends are if we keep a very close eye to those uh, trends where a competitor or potential compa competitor they, they just wouldn't would have access to those uh, numbers or trends or comments or messages or feedback from our user, um, then I'm quite confident we, we, are, we can be always one step ahead of our competition. That's great. Um, I'm sure there's going to be lots of um, questions from the audience, and I'm going to hand over to them in one second. Before I do, I just want to ask you about one thing, and it relates to Amazon. Is it true that the Wattpad Services unavailable deliberately on the Kindle Fire. <laughs> uh, we were quite dis, uh, uh, quite um, 
uh, surprised to find out that we were not on the uh, Amazon Fire because uh, um, uh, Amazon approached us uh, a few months ago and invited us to uh, submit our application to the Amazon App Store and we submitted that, they approved that and uh, it was uh, available on, on the App Store and uh, um, uh, when the Amazon Fire came out, uh, we were expecting what had to be available on, on, the, uh, on the Fire, but we, we were quite surprised that we, we, we were there. Um, there were uh, a few others, uh, a few other companies uh, like Coho. Um, they were uh, 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 also submitted to, to the Amazon App Store and they, uh, it was made available, but it wasn't available on the buy either, but Kobo is different. They are a direct competitor to, to Amazon, and we are a social network. Um, of course, we facilitate media that and write that as well, but um, I was quite surprised because uh, I don't view Amazon as a competitor, and uh, obviously we, we, we have a different point of view. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are still trying to work with uh, Amazon to, to, uh, to solve that. We, we don't even sell books, and the main business is selling books, so I don't see the conflict yet. So if your cell phone rings and the caller ID says Bezos, comma, Jeff, are you going to take the call? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we have this phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I'd take the call if I were you. Um, right, over to the audience. We've got lots of interesting questions, I'm sure. Do you want to come up? Come up. Two questions. What um, do you not think that Kindle Direct Publishing views you as an absolutely vital and and, and uh, well competitor? And two, I want to ask you, sorry, a little bit more about your demographic because you were talking about a skewed YA demographic that is hopefully branching upward, but to, if I may ask more details, to what extent? Um, and the interest in, in perhaps new genres other than YA. Um, uh, for the first question, uh, uh, I, I don't see ourselves as a direct competitor to uh, Kindle self-publishing. We are working with um, Smashwords, for example, they are one of our partners, and, and Lulu as well. And uh, I believe uh, we, we serve different needs in the market. Uh, Smashwords and, and Lulu, for example, they, they, their main, main focus is helping writers to monetize by selling the content. And this is one thing that we don't do, uh, don't want, and don't want to do. So it, it's a perfect partner to, to us. So uh, uh, for Amazon, um, we, we again we, we serve different part of the market, uh, but for the same type of users. So I I believe we we are more um, complementary than than competitive. And uh, for the second question, uh, if you asked me 12 months ago, I would say um, most of our content and our users up to 80 percent. Uh, the teenage, female, uh, teenage girls, for example. But the uh, demographics has been shifting pretty rapidly. Uh, if you go to Wattpad, go to the homepage today and go to sci-fi, for example, you, you, you will see a lot of uh, uh, male writers in their 20s, 30s, or 40s uh, uploading their, their content to, to, to Wattpad today. So. Um, uh, as an analogy, we are uh, seeing the same type of evolution that Facebook saw maybe three, four years ago. You know, Facebook started out as a social network for uh, college students, and in fact, for, Har for Harvard uh, students only, and then increasingly, they, and gradually, they branch out to 20s, uh, the mid-30s people, 40, and now they cover everyone. And, uh, and for us, we, we want to be um, uh, uh, serving the uh, writers and, and readers, uh, regardless of age. Yes, in the front. Yeah, just Hold on. It's okay. Pretty loud, anyway. So, 
the, the question about the Harper Collins experiment. You said people were buying books. Was this demographic, a very young demographic, buying hard paperback books or hard books? And were there extra content added when they went to go buy the book? Did everybody hear the book? Yeah. So the, the Harper Collins experiment, the, the demographic, demographic of those who went and bought the books, did they skew young? Right. And, and was there any additional material uh, that, that they went to go buy? That they went to go buy. Yeah, for that particular experiment, the SQ Young, because that book is, is a YA book uh, catered to age 13 to, to 18, so the uh, buyer would be the teenagers or the parent of, of, a, of a teenager for sure. Uh, with regards to the content, it's identical. It's no different than what they uh, see on one panel. Of, of course, the difference is they, they may buy a physical book. Well, it's just interesting that someone would buy a physical, you know, a younger person may be less wanting to buy a, a physical book, you know, because they have all these digital things, you know, that they would, that a young person would actually want that versus, you know, like me, I used to buying books all my life, so I have more of a, a connection to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Hill. So there are a lot of metadata geeks here, I bet. And uh, if, if looking at, at Wattpad, I'm, I'm struck at how little conventional metadata there is attached to the stories. It's really hard, for example, to find out um, author names. There's no copyright statements, no license statements, no published or year published statements or anything like that. I was wondering if 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 that's by design or by accident, or, or, or do, you, do you see a role going forward for that kind of metadata in, in the evolution of that? Uh, the concept of pen name uh, existed for a few hundred years, so uh, I, I don't think I would want to change that. <laughs> That's why uh, we, in, 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 since almost day one, we um, optionally, uh, as a user, you can, you, you can use your real name, but it's, it's an option. We don't have to use the real name. Uh, uh, and we are seeing a lot of that behavior from our users. Um, uh, it, it wasn't that surprising to me because that culture was baked in, in the uh, story writing and storytelling history. Uh, we, um, like I said, you, you can use the real, real name if you want to. So we are not stopping you from doing that. And uh, I think we probably will remain that way in the foreseeable future. And uh, uh, with regards to the copyright, we actually have a field that um, the, the user can um, enter the copyright information. For example, it can be Creative Commons or uh, publicly available or, um, or the, the writer still owns the copyright, for example. Uh, so that metadata is actually available. Uh, one more question here. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm curious uh, what Wattpad's approach would be to uh, distributing Illustrated books, graphic novels, to their you know, to your readership, given the the challenges associated with the volume of data of you know high quality art, and um, also the you know the challenges associated with presentation. You, know, you mentioned that sharing text has been around since they went the internet. Um, you know, but sharing art is a little bit of a different animal. And I'm curious if you have an approach to that, or if it's something you're avoiding altogether. The, the number one killer for any startup, for all startup companies, is uh, lack of focus. So um, uh, for us, um, focus is very important. Um, so if, if you ask me, uh, uh, yeah, we, we want to do uh, other type of books. So cookbook would be quite interesting. Uh, with, uh, comics would, would, would be quite interesting. But um, uh, like you mentioned, there, there will be presentation challenges. 
So uh, I think in the near term, uh, we probably would not uh, go into that type of market, but near term can be six months, you know? <laughs> so uh, it is a very rapidly changing space, and uh, uh, like I mentioned, one, one thing that we, uh, we, we think we are very good at is um, uh, collect the signals from the community and, and understand what, what they are doing. That will keep us one, uh, a step ahead uh, of, of the competition. So when uh, when we see the need, um, uh, when, when our users uh, are telling us they, they, they want to get head, head into that direction, we will be the first one to know. Gene. You mentioned uh, that uh, <coughs> digital editions will uh, eventually go down to zero margin and <coughs> present very little opportunity for monetizing. You also mentioned that you're working with Lulu. Do you see a monetizing opportunity by directing and directing your authors to go back into print, which will not go to zero? Very good question. Um, when, when I say uh, the the uh, de facto price point will go down to zero, um, uh, it doesn't mean every single piece of content will go to zero. There, there will always be a percentage, um, maybe increasingly smaller, but a percentage of content will be premium content. If you look at video um, on Netflix or on iTunes uh, movie, uh, people are still buying five dollars, six dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars movie today. Um, but whether it's a growing market or a shrinking market is, is a different story and I, I, I don't want to get into a shrinking market. So that, that's why I'm, I'm doing this. Um, so uh, to, to answer your question directly, um, uh, personally I see the world will be also increasingly moving towards uh, digital. Uh, just look at DVDs and, and CDs. Um, and, uh, if you mention CDs to a ten-year-old, they they would ask you, well, what, "What is it?" So um, I, I think if we take a very long-term view, um, I think uh, print books will become will, will become less and less popular. Um, so again, I, I don't think going into a shrinking market would be a good idea for me. Um, so. Um, uh, that, that's one way we can monetize, but I, I don't see that as a, as, as a big opportunity, to be honest. Some of the You mentioned that you let your users, um, you know, you have the top lists of what's popular on the site, but I was curious to know how much you um, push content to users individually, like if you do um, through your apps or through emails, um, the ways that you let your users know if there's content that would be relevant to them on the site. Um, this is one thing that we are not very good at at the moment, and, and we know that. Um, we have some personalized uh, push, personalized re recommendation right now um, that um, is not as targeted as, as we want, and this is something that we are actively addressing right now. Uh, I, I would love to have a, a recommendation as good as Amazon, uh, but we'll, we'll get there one day, uh, but we, we are not quite there yet. Uh, so a similar question to the question about the demographics. I mean, that's always hard because the community builds up around one group and then, you know, I as a guy come in a year ago and it's like walking into a, a Barnes & Noble but everything's romance novels and you're kind of like, oh, I'm not supposed to be in here. Um, and that's a, that's a difficult transition. Um, are you doing anything to, in other words, like for instance, if it's 80% or 70 or 60% YA now, as, as it's going, are you doing anything to kind of give a boost to other areas like science fiction that might make the new user experience a little bit more uh, platform independent in terms of genre? And also, length-wise, are, are these stories, are these novels, where do they fall in general in terms of length and the kind of reading experience people get on average? Um, the, 
Uh, for, for the first question, um, yes, we, we, we do want to uh, give the, the other donors a um, uh, little bit of, of a push because ultimately we want to be uh, broadening our demographics of, um, uh, and building a, a teenage social network is, is cool, but as, um, uh, as a business, it may not be a, a, as good as it uh, should be. So um, we, uh, uh, this is one thing that we are actively working on, is to uh, expand the um, demographics and also expand the, uh, the content selection. Um, uh, to answer your uh, second question, um, the, uh, uh, we are uh, seeing a wide range of length uh, of, of the story, from a short poem that is one page, you know, and to uh, 100,000 words, 200,000 words uh, novel. So, uh, um, of course, there are short stories in, 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 in between. Um, uh, so, uh, it's a very wide range right now. Okay. Um, I have two unrelated questions. One is, what, what, the, what do you think of script? And the second question is, what's the most surprising signal you picked up from your community, and how did you react? Good question. Um, a, a lot of people compare us to uh, script. Um, the, uh, but we, we are in a very, very different business in a way. Um, a script is, uh, the business is very uh, search driven. Um, uh, the the use, typical usage is you go to Google, search for something, uh, perhaps a document or uh, uh, let's say a legal document or um, a PowerPoint presentation and then you click on Google link and, and you, you just uh, send it to a script. Uh, you, you download the, the uh, document or PowerPoint or something and then and, and then you're gone. So uh, the engagement level on script is um, very low. And it's a content repository that you just go fetch and, and then you're gone. Whereas uh, on Wattpad is on the other side of the scale. Um, our users are very engaging. They come back multiple times per day and they will stay on Wattpad um, all day, all night long. In fact, uh, uh, it's a funny uh, um, statistics that I want to share. Uh, I was watching the uh, real-time uh, analytics number on, on a dashboard the other night. Um, 11 p.m. in our time, like it's like 4 p.m. in UK time. Uh, you would expect everyone to be sleeping. Not quite. Uh, ten, we still have 10% of our peak traffic from the UK at, at the time. So 4 a.m. Uh, one out of ten Wattpad users are still reading the story on Wattpad. So that's mind-blowing to me. Um, so uh, to answer the question, the, the usage is very different. Uh, for the, sorry, I forgot the second question now. <laughs> uh, surprise. Uh, surprise. Uh, surprise. Uh, the uh, um, one thing that always surprised me is how positive the, the users are. Um, if you go to our homepage, you will see a scroller um, that shows the most recent comment from the community. And those are real-time comments. And if you have time, go check it out. Uh, it's, uh, it's not curated. It's all real-time. And uh, you, you, if you just sit there and, and watch, I would, I would say 99% of the comments are, wow, this is a great story. I love it. I love it. Upload soon. I can't wait for the next chapter. All those positive, su supportive comments, um, uh, that one thing that always constantly surprised me is uh, how positive, how supportive, supportive the comments are. Um, if you um, go to other social networks and, uh, um, uh, for example, YouTube and, and the old days, they're getting better now. Um, uh, the second you upload a video, you, you get some pretty trashy comments. Uh, and that's one thing that we, uh, were quite worried about, um, but uh, we were so surprised that our users are so friendly, at, at least most of them. I'm not saying everyone uh, is so friendly, that there, there will always be 1% or 1% or of the users, they may be posting offensive messages, uh, you can't avoid that, it's an open internet, but um, 
that percentage is uh, lower than, than I expected. I think we have time for just one question so that we can let Alan get to his board meeting. That's fine with you. As a startup story, how did you get to 7 million hits? Um, you know, the first two years that you mentioned, you, you were struggling and stuff going back. So it's very interesting to kind of find out how, how you grew from, uh, you know, starting out the platform into where you are today. Um, well, I guess it, it comes back to the signal that I was talking about. That there were quite a few inflection points um, in, in the business. For example, iPhone came out, you know, we, we pretty quickly built the, the iPhone app because we, we knew the user would be uh, consuming content from the iPhone. Um, and, and also the, uh, uh, the teenage writer's uh, story that I mentioned. Um, we, we caught that moment when that very good writer joined one pad and we gave her a lot of support. Uh, uh, for example, we had a, a cover page contest uh, just for her story, for example. That uh, helped a lot and uh, uh, they had uh, hundreds of those inflection points in, in our journey and we just have to catch that moment and take advantage, leverage that. Um, uh, no, I'm not sure I answered your question. Yeah, but, um, uh, it's just very hard to single out as one thing that we, we, we did right. And it's not as it's a million small signals that we, we kind of catch over, over a, a long period of time. I think we need to wrap up at this point. So um, please join me in thanking Alan for a really
It's a plus. Someone 